Endometriosis, you ask about it all the time. Today, what is endo? Hey friends, today I'm talking about endo, what it is and what I want you to know when you hear this word. Endometriosis is a really common condition one out of 10 women will suffer from endometriosis. But there's a lot of misconception out there. There's a lot of people telling you different things. And today I just wanna break down at least the basics of what endo is. The reality is nobody knows the exact mechanism for why some women get endometriosis and others do not. There does appear to be a highly genetic component because we see endo run in families. We also see that there's probably some version of an autoimmune connection. Endo is really hard because number one, it is a surgical diagnosis. Oh, that means there's no easy blood test or ultrasound I can do to definitively say that you have endometriosis. I will acknowledge there's oncoming research trying to see if you can do a biopsy sample of the endometrial cells or can you take a swab or do a blood test that would give you more insight. And this will make diagnosing endometriosis so much better for those who are suffering. Some women are completely asymptomatic. Some women, their only symptom is infertility. Others have debilitating pelvic pain, pain with your periods, pain with intercourse, or GI changes like diarrhea, constipation, bloating when you're on your period. In fact, if you are a teenager and you have severely painful periods that are interfering with your life, there's over a 50% chance that you have endometriosis. So there's a lot of different hypotheses for what endo is. The easiest way I like to describe it is your body is having an abnormal reaction to a normal process. So on its purest, endometriosis is endometrial cells. So the inside of the uterus, the endometrium, the part that you shut off every month, finding those implants in your peritoneal cavity, meaning in your abdominal cavity or outside your uterus. Endometrium outside the uterus is how you diagnose the disease. It's not just the presence of these endometrial cells that is the issue. It is actually the fact that you have a severe immune response to them being there. So we don't 100% know how these cells get there. Do they move through the tubes with your period? Do they grow through the uterus? Do they spread through lymph tissue? There's a lot of different hypotheses and probably the truth is somewhere in between but this is how I describe it to help make sense. When you have your period, your uterus starts cramping. So that is how you are expelling menstrual blood out the vagina. Some of these endometrial cells move through the fallopian tubes and you can find menstrual blood inside the abdominal cavity of any woman if you go do surgery for an unrelated reason. So if I go take out your appendix and you're on your period, I would actually see menstrual blood inside and in 90% of women, no big deal. But in women with endo, the body views those cells as abnormal. Oh my gosh, there's blood in here. Send out all the messengers. Let's attack, let's get them. This is why it is autoimmune. The body is attacking its own cells and it, you get very high inflammatory markers. Now there are stages of endometriosis based on the severity of the lesions you find. So how many different spots you find on surgery, where they are, how severe they are. So one to four, four is the most severe, one is the mildest. Interestingly, severity does not correlate with symptoms. And I describe this as stage one and two to our earlier phases of the disease where inflammation is high and inflammation causes pain. You'll hear a lot of people talk about inflammation, bad, bad, bad. This is the stage where things you can do in your life to drop inflammation may have a benefit. So there's a lot of reactivity between endometriosis and other autoimmune diseases like thyroid disease or celiac disease, which is gluten sensitivity. So you see a lot of people say, well, you could try going gluten-free or red meat may make the inflammation worse. And these are things that have been looked at in studies to see if they cause higher levels of inflammatory markers on their own, does this make endo worse? Now, stage three and four are your more scarring. So endo can go from inflammation to scar. Imagine you have a scab, keep picking at it. Yeah, it's going to be like red and beefy for a while, but over time, that scar is actually going to become permanent and scarred where you can't just pick it off. So stage four is severely distorted anatomy, having endometriosis inside your ovaries called endometriomas or also known as chocolate cysts. Now, this process is worse with every ovulation. So when the body makes you a natural estrogen in your body, that actually stimulates endometrial cells. Just like if your body's going to make estrogen from a growing egg, it stimulates the endometrium to grow in anticipation of a pregnancy. Same thing is happening to these endometrial implants. So one of our top treatments is to make you stop ovulating. Well, that's well and good if you don't wanna get pregnant. It actually can prevent the disease from getting worse because you're not stimulating these lesions to grow over and over again. Birth control pills, hormonal contraception, things that could get you not to ovulate, 
that may help prevent the disease from worsening. Transparency, you're not going to reverse the disease. So don't be thinking that if you take these medications, it's going to reverse the disease, but it may help it prevent from getting worse. So if you see a teenager who's got really debilitating pelvic pain and her periods make her call in sick to school all the time, I could go to surgery to diagnose the disease, which taking out the lesions may make it better, maybe forever or maybe temporarily, or I could put her on suppression to see if that helps. A lot of docs don't do a good job of describing that they are putting you on birth control pills for your period pain in case you have endometriosis to prevent it from getting to stage four disease where it may scar your fallopian tubes and prevent you from having a baby. If you're ready to get pregnant now, we're in a totally different ballgame. So if you're ready to get pregnant, we need to know how can we make the disease better month to month because I need you to ovulate to get pregnant. And then how can we get you pregnant faster? Sometimes this includes surgical removal plus treatments to try to improve the efficiency of getting you pregnant. I'm a huge believer that if you have endometriosis, you should not just stop your pill and start trying to get pregnant. I know we all want things to be natural and simple, but I don't want your disease to get worse if conception is not gonna happen naturally. So for example, if you know you have endo or it's highly suspected because your periods were really bad, you were put on birth control pills and you felt great, awesome. Now you're with a partner and you're ready to get pregnant. I love to do a fertility evaluation in you to see if you have ovarian reserve because endometriosis is one of the few things that can get into that ovarian vault and drop our egg count. See if your fallopian tubes are open because endometriosis can lead to scarring of our body and see how your partner's sperm count is. Because if any of these things are showing us that it's unlikely for you to get pregnant naturally, then every ovulatory cycle we have is a cycle to let your disease get worse. That doesn't really make the most sense to me. So when I look at your fertility, your long-term goals, how many kids do you want? We want to look at the whole picture. For all the women out there suffering, I hear you. I know that there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I'm sitting here saying there's no one right pathway for everybody, but you need a doctor that takes you seriously. So if you're having pain and nobody's listening, please, please, please find a new doctor. Okay guys, like always, this is just a short what is endo video. I am going to do an endo q and I'm sure you're gonna have tons of questions. Put them in the comments of this video right here and then we'll do a QA and a where I answer your questions in video format for everybody to learn. As always, you can listen to more in-depth fertility topics on the podcast as a woman and you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks.